Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about vortex generators. Do they work or not? Some pilots say they don't work, they slow you down, some others say they don't really work. I'm a program from Aquarius, he's going to talk about VGs and how they work. Something nice about VGs is that it is not a big or complicated modification. My opinion is that they really work. For example, this slow turn for landing in the gravel bar, the VGs give you a lot of control authority in elevator and in aileron at very slow speeds. Here is a landing of the Cessna 170 on a gravel bar. Also, you can approach really slow and the VGs help doing that. I would say it works good in every kind of airplane. You can see them on airliners and fighter jets too. Do VGs work better on a stall plane than a regular plane? They work as good on every airplane. But to notice them, you need to slow down. I hear many people complaining they put VGs and they did not feel a difference. If you don't slow it down, you will not feel the difference. Since stall airplanes fly slower, it's easier to notice them. In my Cessna 182, for example, I get crisp controls at very low speeds, which is something I really like. Before vortex generators, I will get very mushy controls at slow speeds and I will run out of elevator when coming slow for landing. There is a misconception that VGs are only for store operations or push flying. VGs work great in every airplane. This is a landing in Saudi Arabia with a Cessna 182. Coming slow because the strip is very rough. VGs also help for shorter takeoff in case of tailwheel airplane. You just lift the tail and you're flying really quick. Case of the Cessna 170. There are a few companies that make them. We're going to talk with Annie Brogram from Microaereo. She will explain us how they work. Here we are in Anacortes, Washington, with Annie Brogram from Mar Micro Aerodynamics Vortex Generator. Hello, Annie. Hello. So I want you to explain us what are vortex generators. Vortex generators are, in this case, little tabs. They're aluminum. They're mounted on the wings and the tail of the airplane. They generate a vortex because they're mounted at an angle. The airflow hits the side of the blade, hops over to fill the back side low pressure, and that vortex then spins and creates more lift, allowing the airplane to fly slower speeds, slightly higher angles of attack, so that you have a lower stall speed and better control when you are flying slow speed slow speeds. So in case of the wing, what exactly does it do to the wing? It tricks the airplane into acting like it does responsively when it's going faster, although it's going slower because those vortices are moving faster across the wing. So that's where you get the improved aileron response yeah. and the lowered stall speed. So the airplane thinks it's going faster? Yeah, thinks it's going faster. Perfect. Good trick. Okay, let's go to the vertical or result that you can okay. explain us what it does to each one. So in case of the vertical, we have the position at an angle. They're at an angle and uh, these larger ones are after the prop wash and these are in the free stream air. The airflow again hits the side of the blade, makes a vortex and makes the rudder, the result is the rudder acts as if it is bigger so that you have a better rudder response when you are slow, which is very helpful in crosswinds. Perfect. How about here, under? On the horizontal stabilizer, we put them on the underside because what we want to accomplish is to be able to pull the tail down at slower speeds, which provides better up elevator 
and this results in being able to keep the nose wheel off on landing and to have enough control response. As the wings stay flying longer, you like to be able yep. to have a little bit more elevator authority and you don't need down elevator authority, you just pull the power, the nose goes exactly. down just fine. Up elevator is where we need to enhance. That's yep. why they're on the underside. Yeah, especially airplanes with that are no heavy, like the 182, I remember it used to run out of the elevator when I was coming slow and the vortex generator changed that. Yes. They, they work really well. Well, Wonderful. thank you for letting You're the welcome. time. And see you Good soon. to see you. Good to see you. Bye. Bye-bye. Here you can see a graphic explaining how they work. Here is a test. You can see the wing without vortex generators and the stall speed, how it stalls. And then they add vortex generators and it makes a bit different. You can see the angle of attack is increased with VGs, reducing the stall speed. In the case of the Cessna 182, the VGs are on the wing, on the vertical and horizontal step. Installation is not difficult, but it has to be signed off by a certified mechanic. I flew my Cessna 182 before BGs and after, and I did not see any reduction in cruise speed. What I felt on the very first flight was I was having more elevator authority at the slow speeds. In the case of the Cessna 170, the BGs are on the wing and under the horizontal stand. I flew my Cessna 170 for about 40 hours before adding VGs and I could tell the difference right away. A slow flight before VGs was about 46 miles an hour. After VGs, same weight, was about 42 miles an hour. My approach speeds were reduced and I felt a lot more control at slow speeds with roll authority and also more elevator authority for landing. I am very happy with the results that we just made in my Cessna 170. I also fly a CJ6 Nanshan military trainer and that one also has vortex generators only on the wings. The test results claim increased roll authority and, and resistance to enter a spin and easier recover of spin. Also a slight reduction in stall speed which allows for slower approaches. For twin-engine aircraft, manufacturers claim that VGs reduce single-engine control VMCA, improve the effectiveness of ailerons and rudder, provide a smoother ride, turbulence, and make the aircraft more stable for instrument flying. When flying at high-density altitude airstrips, every bit of performance is appreciated, and in the case of VGs, they do help with performance. This is the Cessna 182 and taking off from Wilson Bar in Idaho. Since VGs accelerate the air, it will trick the airplane to think it's going faster and that creates lift. With the Cessna 182, you can hear a whistle that VGs make at very slow speeds. This VG sound or whistle is made at a very high angle of attack and slow speed. The only airplane I have here to do this is the 182. This one is a challenging gravel bar, slow turn to the right, 
and you have lots of control with VGs, no motion control, very crisp and responsive, which is what you want in this kind of landings. Bar, Idaho. That's Cessna 170 doesn't produce this sound. sound from inside the cockpit except for the stall warning. So if you have an airplane and you're thinking about VGs, I highly recommend it. Even if you don't fly the back country, you will increase the performance of your airplane and also increase safety. And the VGs on the CJ6 Nancha does not make any sound at all. VGs makes the stall really mellow on the CJ6 Nancha. Hope you guys enjoy and hopefully you can join me on Patreon and support Backcountry 182. Thanks for watching. It is very easy to join. To be a patron of Backcountry 182, go to the uh, YouTube channel. On the right hand side there is the link and then it takes you to the Patreon page. Here you can see all the tiers and what is all about the support for Backcountry 182 YouTube channel. Also another way to access the Patreon link is in the description of the video I put in YouTube on Backcountry 182 channel. There is a link for Patreon, so just click on that and it will take you to the page. Thank you for watching, it would be amazing if you guys are interested and give some support.